an age of information, especially digital information, which we are creating at an exponential pace. As you can see the numbers behind me, in 2002, we created five exabytes of information. In 2006, we created 161 bytes of exabytes of information. Thanks to Twitter, Facebook updates, constant Facebook updates, blogs, emails, in 2010, it's expected we're going to create 1,000 exabytes of information. Let me tell you what an exabyte is. Maybe you already know. It's a billion gigabyte of information. Let me put that in a perspective. That's three million times the information contained in all the books published so far in history. Let me put that in perspective. Okay. That would be stacking 12 stacks of books all the way from Earth to Sun, 92 million, 92 million miles, 12 stacks. That was created in 2006. And in 2010, we're going to create five times more than that. I am a scientist, a researcher. We are not far behind. We write a lot. I mean a lot. The numbers behind me are uh, from a service by National Library of Medicine called Medline. They collect all the journal, published journal articles in one place. For the year 1950, they had 82,000 published journal articles. So these are just life sciences and biomedical journal articles, not all, just biomedical and life sciences. It increased to 4,000, 400,000 articles in 1990. And in 2009, it was almost 850,000 published articles just for one domain. So imagine if you are a researcher trying to understand an important disease, maybe trying to find a cure for that disease. You would like to know everything you need to know to find some answers. What are the genes that are responsible for it? What kind of proteins interact in which cell lines? Say for this particular disease, I would like to know what stops the cancer cell growth? What's that magic drug, right? So a lot of questions. And in order to find some answers, probably you might do what I would do, Google it, right? Google is very good service. Specifically, they have a service for just searching literature, published literature called Google Scholar. Very well engineered service gives you a little bit of, I would say, a few more articles I can read in my lifetime. Uh, NLM has a service called PubMed, which searches Medline. They still give me something, probably take me years and years to read. And that's what people do. I mean, it takes them eight, 10 years to become an expert in particular disease, or even one particular gene. So I asked uh, a, a researcher from Translation Genomic Institute here at Phoenix called Tijen, how would she handle this problem of information overload? How does she tackle this problem? I mean, she does that for a living, right? So she said it typically takes her two months. She starts with a few keywords. She searches, finds a few articles. She reads them. She goes back, finds a few more keywords, searches, finds a few more keywords. So she basically does this recursive cycle of search, read, search for two months until she is comfortable with a set of articles or maybe a gene that looks interesting to dig into more, to do some more experimentations in the wet lab. So it got me started. It, I started thinking, what can I do to reduce that time? I mean, two months is a significant amount of time, and it is a significant resource to spend. Can I reduce that by half? Can I reduce it by maybe 30%? So basically, what I was looking to do was find ways to reduce the time spending in finding those right articles. Of course, Google is a really great solution if you're looking for how to get to Bank of America website. You know? But it shows on the top right there. But if you're looking for something that was only published once, say 10 years ago, maybe it's on the 100th page. Uh, it's very hard to find something like that. And if you're a researcher spending valuable resource, like money, you have to explain to your manager what did you last six months, and then you find out somebody did that two years ago in France. 
and they didn't find anything. So it's a bad, you cannot talk to a manager saying that I did six months of research and found out exactly what they found out in France. So the, the silver bullet here is to find or build a tool that does the reading for you, or at least most of the reading for you, so that you don't have to read a whole lot before you decide what's important. So the goal is for her to do the cool stuff, get to the lab faster so that you, know, you do the real stuff, not spend your most of the time finding out what to read, what to, uh, what's the right article, what's the right gene should I look into. So I, I built a tool, I did research for a couple of years, and gradually, step by step, I realized I was building and building, and said, okay, maybe it's time to data mine everything. Read, write a program that reads every line, parses the natural text, identifies the entities, the drugs, chemicals, diseases, genes, and identifies the relationship between them so when you type something, it already knows what you do look for next. So let me show you an example of a tool I built called BioEve. Okay, it looks like a typical search engine. You have a search box and you have results. Only difference is you have a left panel that helps you navigate this result set. So let's start with a query, say breast cancer, okay? So you see we get around 12,000 results, but on the left side is the panel shows you what is interesting or what peop other people have thought is interesting. So you, just hold on, scroll up, scroll up. There, a gene there, CERB2, is heavily associated with breast cancer. And you see uh, another one, Catespin D, that's actually, uh, they call it tumor marker. If the results, test results show Catespin D or increase of Catespin D, that means there is a tumor growing somewhere. And let's scroll down to, uh, let's look at what are the other, uh, some of the drugs that have been studied with breast cancer in literature. You can see on the top, uh, adriamycin is an anti-cancer drug. It's a chemotherapy drug. And you can see it's a generic version, duoxorobacin there. It's a generic version of the same drug. So let's click on that. So let's scroll up. So from 12,000 articles, with just one click, we got to 368 articles. So let's scroll down. Let's look at what are the important drugs that we can see. You see the uh, Vincristine, it's very hard to pronounce these terms. There's also another anti-cancer drug. It's a chemotherapy drug. The one above it, tamoxifen, it's an interesting chemical. It acts like an antagonist for estrogen receptors. So the level of estrogen in cell shows uh, presence or absence of cancer, especially for this cancer. So let's click on that. Okay, you scroll up, we find 32 articles from 380 something. So let's look at positive estrogen receptor on the left. So these are basically for this, all these queries, uh, we refined it, and then even while you're refining, it still shows for these three terms what is more in, important relationships you can further look into. So if you, if you look into positive estrogen receptor, uh, down, a little down, third from the bottom. Yeah, fourth, yeah. So we found an article, you can read the text here and click on more. Uh, we found one article that's talking about a study done, uh, I think 40 women, 41 candidates that had advanced breast cancer and the effect of this particular drug and their findings. So with just three clicks, few minutes, we found an important article. That might have taken me maybe weeks or hours uh, or days to do that. If you have some time, I can show you one quick example. Uh, let's restart the search. Let's type a known carcinogen uh, benzene. And let's look at the diseases that are uh, related to benzene or are caused by benzene. You can see hypersensitivity, lung cancer, anemia, acute leukemia, let's click on acute leukemia, the one on the top side, AM, AML, yeah. Go up, go up, we have five articles. So with few clicks, you can navigate within this space. And 
why this matters versus, say, a search service like Google, because you don't want to miss one particular abstract, one particular article that may be exactly what you're doing somebody did five years ago. You don't want to miss that. So the completeness of the information. So I, I personally believe, I'm very, very optimistic that as we navigate in this rainforest of information, uh, we already walked into it. As we walk through this, we will have more and more tools like BioEve that will help us find the path. Thank you.